We're now going to do one more example of Stokes' theorem. This is similar to a previous example, but slightly trickier in one respect. So our problem is to calculate the line integral over C of f dot dr, where f is the vector field sine of sine z, comma z cubed, comma minus y cubed, and c is the curve where x squared plus y squared equals 1, and z equals x, oriented counterclockwise when viewed from above. Now this problem is set up so that if you try to evaluate the line integral directly, you'll get a difficult or impossible integral because of the sine of sine z here. So instead, we want to use Stokes' theorem to replace this line integral by the integral over a surface bounded by c of the curl of f. Now, what surface should we use? Well, to get some idea, let's draw a picture. So what's the curve C? Well, the shadow in the xy plane is the unit circle x squared plus y squared equals 1. But because of the equation z equals x, it's tilted up out of the xy plane. So it goes up to the point 1 comma 0 comma 1. It goes down to the point minus 1 comma 0 comma minus 1. On the y-axis, it hits the point 0, 1, 0. So it looks sort of like this. And it's oriented counterclockwise when viewed from above. So that means the arrow goes like this. Okay, so that's our curve C. Now what's the surface that it bounds? Well, this surface, the, sorry, the circle, it's, well, it's not a circle anymore. The curve C is actually an ellipse. It's in the plane. Z equals X. Indeed, z equals x is one of the equations defining it. So we could let s, the simplest thing to do would be to take s to be the part of the plane z equals x bounded by c. So s will look like this. So it's flat, it's not horizontal, but it's flat, it's not curved. Okay, now what's the orientation going to be? Well, since C is oriented counterclockwise viewed from above, the normal to S should point up like this. Then C will be oriented positively as the boundary of S. Otherwise we'll get the wrong sign in Stokes' theorem. So I want this to be oriented upward. Now, what's the parameterization of the surface? Well, since the surface is part of the plane z equals x, and this plane is the graph of the function x, then we can use the graph parameterization. So I can say x equals u, y equals v, and z equals u. And what's the domain? Well, the boundary of the domain is where x squared plus y squared is 1. That is, u squared plus v squared equals 1. And to get the part of the plane bounded by that curve, I need to replace this equality by an inequality. So I want u squared plus v squared is less than or equal to 1. OK, so that's my parameterization. Let's calculate ru cross rv. So ru cross rv so ru is 1, 0, 1 and rv is 0, 1, 0 so the cross product, the first term is 0 times 0 times 1 times 1 is minus 1 second term is 1 times 0 minus 1 times 0 is 0 and the third term is 1 times 1 minus 0 times 0, which is 1. OK, and in particular, this points upward, so it's giving us the correct orientation. So now we can evaluate the integral. So by Stokes' theorem, the line integral over C of f dot dr that we want to evaluate is the double integral over u squared plus v squared is less than or equal to 1, 
that's the domain of our surface, of the curl of f dot ru cross rv dA. Now what's the curl of f? Well, the first component is d by dy of minus y cubed minus d by dz of z cubed. So that's minus 3y squared minus 3z squared. The second component, I don't actually care what it is because we're going to dot product with this vector up here whose second component is 0. And the third component is d by dx of z cubed minus d by dy of sine of sine z, which is 0. And in the integral, I actually want to write everything in terms of u and v. So remember that um, y was equal to v and z was equal to u. So this is minus 3v squared minus 3u squared dot 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 0. So now this integral is the double integral over u squared plus v squared is less than or equal to 1 of the dot product of these two vectors, which is just 3 times u squared plus v squared dA. And now to evaluate this, I can use polar coordinates in the uv plane. So I can write this as the integral as theta goes from 0 to pi and r goes from 0 to 1 of 3r squared times the magnification factor r dr d theta. And when I work this out, um, the inner integral does not have any theta in it, so I just multiply it by 2 pi. And this inner integral, well, the integral of r cubed from 0 to 1 is a fourth, so I get 3 fourths. And the final answer is 3 pi over 2. Incidentally, we could combine the two steps of parameterizing the surface S and converting to polar coordinates into one step as follows. So I could alternately parameterize the surface S as follows. So I'm going to think of u and v like polar coordinates. So I could take x to be u cosine v, y equals u sine v. So x and y are going to range over the unit disk. So this means that uh, u is going from 0 to 1, and v is going from 0 to 2 pi. So the domain is a rectangle. And then z is supposed to equal x. So z is, again, u cosine v. So that's another parameterization of the surface where the domain is a rectangle. And we could calculate ru cross rv. So ru is cosine v comma sine v comma cosine v. rv equals minus u sine v u cosine v minus u sine v. And when I take the cross product, the first component, the sine v times minus u sine v minus cosine v times u cosine v. So that's minus u, because cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. The second component is cosine v times minus u sine v minus the same thing. So that's 0. And the third component is cosine v times u cosine v minus sine v times minus u sine v. So that's u. And this third component is positive, so it gives the correct orientation. Actually, this vector is 0 where nu is equal to 0, so this parameterization is not completely smooth. But that only is messed up in the boundary, and it will still give us the correct answer. OK, so then we get that the integral over c of f dot dr is the double integral um, over this rectangle, so let's call this d, of what? So I have to take ru cross rv times the curl of f. So I have to convert um, minus 3y squared minus 3z squared into these new coordinates. So here y squared plus z squared is u squared. So I have um, 
minus 3u squared comma um, something comma 0 dot minus u comma 0 comma u dA. And this dot product is 3u cubed. And then the rest of the calculation comes out exactly the same as before. I just have a u instead of an r. So that's just another way you could have done the problem.